to solve this question, if we go through the options given once to convert BCO into XS3, relating uh, the question and options, if you look into option A, it is what adding 3 to all the digits given, as it is 4 plus 3, 7, and 5 plus 3, 8, and 3 plus 3, 6. Look into option B, it is 4 plus 3, 7, 5 remained as it is, 3 remained as it is. Look into option C, uh, 4 remained as it is, 5 remained as it is, 3 plus 3, 6. If you think it is adding 3 to all, A would be the option. If you think adding 3 to most, B would be the option. If you think adding uh, 3 to least, C would be the option. But uh, with the conceptual background of XS3, one can directly tick uh, none of the above as a right answer here. Because XS3 never depends on BCO. It depends on BCD. The input given is BCO, invalid input. By finding that, I can directly get out the answer as none of the above. And the other way, XS3 answer related to BCD will always be in four digits of each. But none of the options given are having in four digit form. Right? So if I get a right answer for this question, converting this into BCD and then adding 3 to all. So it is 4, 5, 3, octal, conversion into decimal to get to BCD answer. 3 into 8 power 0, 5 into 8 power 1. 4 into 8 square, which gets you a 299 decimal answer. So, it is BCD of 299, XS3 is of adding 3 to each digit, 2 plus 3, 5, 9 plus 3, 12, 9 plus 3, 12, which is the final answer for this question. Right. Let us solve this question by starting from the definition of racing. When you define the word racing, consent to sequential circuits flip-flops, we can give the best definition as racing is toggling more than once. Is it not uh, minimum twice the meaning of more than once? Minimum twice in a single clock. In the question, delta t is given as the clock period on time of the circuit, tp is given as the delay time of the circuit, response time of circuit. When you look into that, so I am drawing the output equation of uh, the flip-flop q with uh, jk as one inputs. When you get the output of this, uh, if it is uh, the delta t given, if I draw the output for q, uh, 
uh, after every uh, TP, you get a delay once. Has TP given us uh, 10 milliseconds, right? After first 10 milliseconds, once it will have a response. After second 10 milliseconds, second time the response will be there. So we have defined racing means uh, responding minimum twice. So after crossing the 20th millisecond, the second time response will be there in this one. If I, if I take an example of delta T as 50 milliseconds, drawing TP as 10 milliseconds. So if I draw the response, after every 10 milliseconds, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So after 10 milliseconds toggle, after 20 toggle, after 30 toggle, after 40 toggle, after 50 toggle. So this is called as racing. Toggling more than once in a single clock. In the given example, it will occur when delta T e exceeds 20 milliseconds. Not even equal to 20 milliseconds. So when it is when it is equal to 20 milliseconds, racing will only racing will not occur. Toggling will occur only once. So it will toggle more than once only when it is exceeding 20 milliseconds. The right answer is what uh, delta T greater than 20 milliseconds. The question given here uh, says, so the circuit given here is positive logic circuit, but he is asking uh, negative logic outputs. To solve this question, we have to first understand the difference between positive and negative logic. In positive logic, high will act as high, low will act as low, as natural. But in negative logic, high will act as low, low will act as high, and uh, negative logic is defined as inversion not only to the input, but also to the each output. I'm sorry. Inversion not only to the output, but also to each input level is defined as negative logic. When you look into the example of uh, negative and, this is what uh, our AND gate, as we know. Negative logic here is applying inversion not only at output, but also at each input level. When you go with this, if I define as AB here, we get as A bar into B bar whole bar. Is it not A plus B? So, negative end is uh, acting as R and this is what R. Similarly, R will act as AND, NAND will act as NOR, NOR will act as NAND, 0 will act as 1. 1 will act as 0. And here one thing to be noticed is that negative logic is never applicable for undeclared variables like A, X, Y, alpha, A bar, B, 
whose value is not defined as 0 or 1. Until the value is defined, negative logic is not applicable. Hence, A remains as A, A bar remains as A bar. That means, not will remain as not. Right. Uh, two ways of solving this question. If it is conventional question, we have to redraw this with the negative logic equivalent and then uh, complete circuit to be redrawn by converting uh, XR as XNR, NAND as NOR, NOR as NAND, N as R, XR as XNR. By making the variables remaining as same, A as A, C as C, A bar as A bar, VCC to be as a ground like that and solve the question. But if it is multiple choice question, I don't think we'll find that much time of redrawing the circuit and solve it. The better way is solve as it is and then apply the negative logic at the output, which will give the same output as you redraw the circuit and do it. If you think in that, uh, let us solve Y1. Is it not uh, VCC means 1, exclusive R A, exclusive R C is what given one. And if you look into the second event of Y1, it is A bar into C bar whole bar. If I solve Y1 overall, Y1 is equal to 1 exclusive R, A exclusive R C, multiplication, A bar into C bar whole bar is A plus C I remember, right? 1 exclusive R something is always opposite to something. So, when you get into this, you get the solution as AXRC bar into A plus C. When you get into multiply this AX, A exclusive R C bar and A plus C, it is AXNRC. into A plus C. If you solve this and you get final answer as uh, AC, right? Positive Y1 is uh, AC here. If you look into Y2 solving, Y2 is equal to Y1 exclusive R C plus VCC bar VCC means 1 here. So, Y1 exclusive R, C plus 1 bar is, uh, I mean, uh, 1 plus anything is 1, 1 inversion is 0. So, it is Y1 as it is. So, it is again AC. Right? Uh, these are positive answers. What did we got? Direct answers. So, in positive, we got Y1 as AC and Y2 as also of AC. In negative, as we know, R becomes end and becomes R, AC will become A plus C. I think it's an easier way of solving. Solve it as it is, apply the negative logic at the ending. As we know, this is the standard realization of uh, exclusive R by NOR with uh, four gates to get XNOR output and five gates to get XR output. And I am treating this as uh, Y1. And uh, we can also do this realization in the other way also where the main intention of the question comes into the picture here. That is, here we got XNOR first and then XR and uh, we get XR first and then XNR the other way. If I go in that way, so if I realize uh, A exclusive RB by NOR, NOR means A plus B bar. A exclusive RB means uh, A bar B plus AB bar by A plus B bar form. 
this I can do in this way a plus b into a bar plus b bar multiply this you get a bar cancelled a b bar and b b bar cancelled a bar b expansion to this if I go like this a plus b into a bar plus b bar can be given as a b whole bar I think we can apply double inversion for any symbol as our wish hence it becomes a plus b double bar and a b bar double bar right if I take uh, brackets to this first step apply the de Morgan theorem what I get the answer here is hold this as a hold this as b a bar into b bar is it not uh, a plus b bar so a here is a plus b bar plus b here is a b double bar so cancelled it is a b so whole bar as I explained a bar into b bar equal to a plus b whole bar and we know how to get a b using the nor and this is however nor and the resultant is also in nor so when you draw the circuit for this it is this first getting a b a here b here a plus 0 bar a bar b plus 0 bar b bar it is what uh, a b again uh, a nor of uh, a b resultant nor <coughs> if I take uh, a b for this it is a plus b bar as we derived a b plus a plus b bar bar is equal to a exclusive r b is what the statement given we declared it as y2 when uh, we compared y1 and y2 in uh, different ways both of them are uh, deriving exclusive r and here it is uh, xr with uh, phi gates and they are also xr with phi gates when uh, y1 is a exclusive rb phi naughts used when y2 is also a exclusive rb phi naughts used we have a confusion which one can be the best out of them when that comes into the picture we have to depend on uh, distinguishing by power consumption and speed of the operation when you look into the power consumption between y1 and y2 does power consumption varies by the number of uh, inputs are number of times the power taken from inputs I think it is number of times power taken from inputs never by number of inputs if you look into that y1 how many times the power drawn from a and b so twice a is used twice b is used if I look into y2 is again the same twice a is used twice b is used so there is no difference between power consumption in y1 and y2 so power consumption is same between y1 and y2 then I look into the speed of the operation the speed of the operation depends on uh, number of gates or number of levels I think it is number of levels number of simultaneous uh, workings but not number of gates in the circuit right when I look into the to count delay of y1 it is one gate second level so it is second gate so this is first level this is second level this is third level and this is fourth level one two three four even after five gates are involved in this circuit we have to count only four gate delay because it is only four levels here so if it is y1 it is a four level working 
if i look into y2 number of levels involved here first level where three gates are involved second level one gate is involved third level one gate is involved so it is only three level delay four level delay is less in the speed three level delay is more in the speed hence y2 concluded to be faster here uh, the statement parallel in uh, serial out uh, indicates loading the data parallelly and uh, taking it serially out in this four bit operation uh, q0 q1 q2 q3 after loading the data parallelly it comes from q0 to q1 q1 to q2 q2 to q3 q3 will act as serial out and here serial out uh, does not mean it uh, the bit disappearing from q3 it means appearing on q3 whether it is serial out or parallel out it does not mean it parallelly or serially going out it is appearing on the output considering that as a statement when you look into parallel and serial out parallel and serial out has uh, two options number 1 piso by parallel in with uh, asynchronous inputs here one statement if it is with asynchronous inputs loading parallel in we do not require the help of clock loading with asynchronous inputs means using preset and clear it is a condition out of preset clear clock only one must be used at a time because all those three are asynchronous inputs so using preset and clear loading parallel data we don't require the help of clock so without any clock we can load the data if i take an example of uh, 1011 we loaded the data without the help of the clock observe one thing here at the meantime one bit is already appearing on the serial output so in this period of time two things have happened one is parallel loading second is one bit serial out is completed now only three more bits are to be serially out so as first clock we load zero here then shift happens 1 1 0 second clock we load zero here shift happens 0 1 1 third clock we load zero again here shift happens 0 0 1 0 0 i think the whole data is serially out you could observe 1 0 1 1 is serially out as within no clock 1011 is parallelly loaded you could notice in this no clock period time parallel loading is done and one bit is serially appeared at out 
if I conclude PISO by parallelin with sink inputs, so indicates it requires one clock of loading the data. So in the first clock, we load 1011. Parallel in is completed. Uh, and same time one bit has already appeared at serial output. Now we require three more clocks to get it out. Second, you load zero here, shift one one zero. Third clock, you load zero here, shift zero one one. Fourth clock, you load zero here, shift zero zero one. And parallel in in first clock, serial out in the remaining three clocks. And here also, first clock is common for parallel in and one bit appeared serial out. Total number of clocks are four. Finally, PISO by sync inputs require four clocks. PISO by async inputs requires three clocks. Regarding to the question, frequency given is anyhow 10 megahedges. So time taken is three by 10 megahedges here and four by 10 megahedges here. Thank you. As we know, the question given is whether 2 is 2 on multiplexer, asking you to find out y1. If I define the equation for y1, is it not S0 bar into I0 plus S0 into I1? In that way, sigma small m 2367 bar into I0 is uh, sigma small m. 0, 1, 2, 3 plus S0 sigma small m 2, 3, 6, 7 into I1 is uh, pi capital M uh, 0, 1, 2, 3. Well, when you're looking to the inversion of uh, sigma small m 2, 3, 6, 7, it is as if uh, the opposite terms get SOP. The opposite terms out of these th these four are sigma small m. I think it is uh, 0, 1, 4, 5. Multiplied with sigma small m, 0, 1, 2, 3. Plus sigma small m, 2, 3, 6, 7 multiplied with pi capital M uh, 0, 1, 2, 3 indicates opposite terms are with the uh, sigma small m. The opposite terms to this are uh, 4, 5, 6, 7. So it is of again sigma small m 4, 5, 6, 7. When an end operation happens between SOPs and here 0, 1 are the common terms and here uh, 6 and 7 are the common terms and you get the answer as sigma small m 0 comma 1 plus uh, sigma small m 6 comma 7 which is equal to sigma small m 0 1 6 7 for f of abc if you solve this question by k map you get an answer as a bar b bar plus ab which is equal to x naught of ab